to Louis fifth in 2010 in Vancouver, a few months away from Sochi. What are your goals at this point? 2010, I was like, I was a favorite to medal. All I wanted to do was medal. I put down a really good run at the time. Crowd even booed my score when they put me in fifth place. So I was like, well, so mad, but at least I was excited. You know, I've never really had a crowd that angry about your score. But now moving into 2014, grew up a little bit, matured a little bit. I got a new trainer named John Schaefer, so I took it to that to the next level. I met him through Apollo Ono. I started paying attention more and controlling what I can control and not necessarily as much what other people are doing, what the judges' scores are. So I do want a podium. I do want to win, obviously. That's why I always go. But I'm looking more of just putting down the best run that I can and then let you know everything else kind of fall into place because I can't control what the judges are scoring me. It's a subjective sport. There's this tension in sports like snowboarding, aerials, even figure skating on what the most important thing is. Is it to do the most outlandish trick that you may not land perfectly or is it to put down a clean, safe run? That's tough. That is a really tough question. I like it though. Um, with FIS, which is the federation that the Olympics are under for us, um, they really like clean, executed runs. You know, landing perfectly, no bobbles. But in the other sense, you know, you want to push the sport. This is the world stage. Everyone's watching. This is a great place to just put down the, as we say, like the banger trick. I want to put down a run that people don't do and that stands out, but I know I can do it stock and clean so I can kind of appease both. But for me, I just kind of, I have fun with my runs. I like to do tricks that I think would be cool to link together, but I know I'm going to link. It seems like even in the last four, six, eight years, the, the sport has sort of stepped up another level in terms of preparation with the athletes. Do you feel like it's, it's matured, it's gotten much more serious, as it's become much more prominent in the Olympics? It's getting there. It's also just the evolution of the sport. The sport's getting so gnarly that you need your body to, to be able to withstand slams, to even perform the tricks in general. And then let's say, you know, hopefully you don't, but if you get hurt and you need to get surgery, going into surgery in shape cuts your rehab time down by a lot. It prevents injuries. Your body's feeling good. Um, you can perform better. So I stopped drinking. I'm like two and a half years of no drinking. We all saw four years ago what happened to Kevin Pierce heading into the games. Is that fear factor that you could take a, take a jump and land on your head essentially uh, like Kevin did and just be done with the sport for life or perhaps even die from it? Is that ever in the back of your mind? Oh yeah, it's always in the back of my mind. I mean, I just had one of my good friends uh, broke his C5 and a half in his neck in New Zealand on a trick that he's done before. You know, that's why it's a calculated risk. That's why I'm doing everything in my power to be the best snowboarder I can now. So whatever happens, I know it can be gone tomorrow, but I look back and know I have no regrets. And that's the way I'm kind of living right now is just no regrets. Put it all out there, you know, step up everything. And, you know, I've made a lot of sacrifices since the last Olympics and sacrifices that 99% of the people in snowboarding and other sports would never be willing to make. For me, it's just putting it all out there now adds, adds longevity, and it's just, I'm just way more focused because I know that can be gone in a split second. Well, Louis Vito, no regrets heading into Sochi.